Hello guys and welcome back to the Micropilot channel and today we're talking about how to do an aircraft mass imbalance to make sure you're safe to take off before you go flying. And just a quick reminder, don't forget that you can get 5% off Poolist flight equipment if you use my discount code the Micropilot when you check out. Now when it comes to the mass and balance of an aircraft, obviously it's very important because you need to make sure that the aircraft is safe to take off. So today I'm going to be taking you through an example of how I calculate the mass and balance for the Cadbury G2 helicopter. But this method and the procedure for this applies to pretty much all aircraft. Now quite logically there's a few figures that you need to know before you start and that will include things like how much you weigh, how much your passengers and baggage weighs, and the empty weight of the aircraft and something called the X arm and the Y arm of the empty mass of the aircraft itself. So when it comes to calculating our aircraft's mass and balance we get out our sheet that allows us to do so. Now a little helpful thing that I've done is laminated one of the mass and balance forms so I can use marker pens on the sheet and then simply wipe them off after I've done my calculations. This way I'm using the same sheet and I'm not just wasting paper every single flight I go on. So on today's pretend flight, I'm gonna put a date of the day that this video goes out. Pilot in command today is myself and the aircraft registration we're gonna go for today is Golf Hotel Charlie Echo. November, which is one of the Cadbury G2 helicopters we've got at Helicenter. So looking on from here, the rest of it is split up into three sections. We need to work out the longitudinal weight and balance of the aircraft, the lateral weight and balance of the aircraft, and then depending on the no fuel and takeoff weight and balances for both the longitudinal and the lateral weight and balances, we put those into the graphs and then we see whether they're within the limits allowed for the aircraft. When you're filling this out, it's very important that you read the piece of paper itself, as there's a lot of very important information down here that we're about to go through. So the way the mass and balance of the aircraft is figured out is by a reference datum point that is external to the helicopter in a point and space in time. And from there, everything is figured out by yourself and you make sure that everything falls within the parameters set outlined in the aircraft's pilot's operating handbook. Now, one of the first bits of information you need to know is the basic empty weight of the aircraft itself. Now, this is different for every single aircraft out there. Now, not every Cabra G2 helicopter out there weighs the same, and neither does its longitudinal or lateral arm lie in the same place either. So, as you can see on the screen, as specified by the manufacturer, we have a weight of 431.3 kilograms. So, we go and write it in this box here, and its longitudinal arm is 2213. So we write 2213 in here. As you can see, these are in millimetres and kilograms. Other mass and balance forms out there, if we have a look at the Robinson R44, they do it in inches and pounds. So always make sure you know exactly what units your weight and distances are measured in. But for the Cabri G2, we are doing this in millimetres and kilograms. So going back to some basic physics, the moment of an object is the force applied to it times by distance. So the force times by the distance gives us our moment. So if we pull out our calculator, we do 2213 times 431.3 and that gives us that value there. 6.9. So that was our first moment that we figured out. From here on it tells you what the arm distances are for different weights of different factors that might change. So for example, myself who is the pilot for this flight, I am 
85 kilograms. So we put that in the box there and it tells us that the longitudinal arm for the pilot's seat is 1300 millimeters from the datum point. So just like we've done before, we times these two together to get 110500 and that's our moment there. Let's say I have a passenger of 78 kilograms. So we times those two together and we get 101400. Now, this is where you need to read the sheet itself. So you've got these asterisks here. So we look down and the first one we have at the bottom of the sheet. So it says, if door is not removed, use weight zero. If door is removed, use weight minus 4.2 kilograms. And so because of that, because I'm not removing the doors today, I'm gonna to put zero for both the right door and the left door. And then obviously a value times zero is zero. So we just put zero in those boxes there. In the rear of the aircraft today, we've got five kilograms of kit. So that goes in that box there. And again, those two times together. And then we haven't got anything in the front luggage compartment. So that's zero. And again, that one is zero there. Now, everything we've done up to this point is factoring everything in the aircraft now for our flight, except for the fuel. So now what we do is we total up the weight section to give us 599.3 kilograms. And then we also add up the moment section to give us 1175636.9. And now to get the arm, we simply divide the total moment here by the total weight of the aircraft so far without fuel and that gives us roughly 1961.6 so moving on from here i've calculated that for my flight today we need 100 liters of fuel now don't forget that your fuel has a specific gravity because avgas and other types of fuel weigh less than water do. So for example, one kilogram of water is equal to one liter of water. So for Avgas, for every one liter, it's 0 0.72 kilograms. So quite simply for my 100 liters of fuel that I require for today's flight, that gives us 72 kilograms of fuel for this flight. Now, again, down here at the bottom, it says that if your fuel is between 50 and 150 liters, we need to use longitudinal arm 1886. So we put 1886 in this box down here. And from here, again, we just times these two together to give us the moment of 135790.2. Sorry, nine two. And again, we add these two together, 8.9, and we add those two weights together because that's the empty weight of everything in the aircraft without fuel. So now adding the weight of the fuel to that, 671.3 kilograms in total. To work out the longitudinal arm of the aircraft fully loaded out with fuel, and so dividing that number by this number, we get 1953.6. Now it's quite obvious that whilst we're flying, we burn fuel. So this is why we need to know what the mass and balance of the aircraft will be when we take off full of fuel and what it will be when we're empty of fuel, but still with the same payload on board. All we do here now is plug these values into the longitudinal C of G box. So if we put 1961.6, we find it along here. So that will be roughly about there. And we go up to 599 kilograms, which is roughly up there. We can put a little X on there. Looking at 
the takeoff weight and balance, we see that we're 671 kilos. And then we plug in the longitudinal arm, which is 1953. So that's roughly forwards a little bit. And then that's roughly there. And then all we do from there is draw a line between the two. And we can see that throughout the flight, that as the fuel changes, we travel along that line there. Now it's not very obvious on this graph as it is a photocopy. So let me just very quickly draw in the lines better. So as long as your two X's fall within those red lines there, you're within your sensor of gravity limits for the longitudinal section of the aircraft. Now we move on to doing the lateral weight and balance of the aircraft. Now, as you can see, it quite simply starts off with all of the same values for the weight in the initial section. So if you just very quickly fill all of those in. Now, the one thing to note about the lateral weight and balance is we do have different values for the arm. So don't get those mixed up with the longitudinal arms. So the basic empty weight arm for the aircraft Golf Hotel Charlie Echo November is minus 15. Now, the one thing that can make you go wrong here is the difference in signs. So you've got minus signs and plus signs. So just make sure that when you're doing your calculations here, you figure those out correctly. Now I'm just gonna fill all of these values in very quickly because these are just simple multiplications. So we filled those in down there. And now we do what we did earlier. We total up this section and we total up that section. Just note that the no fuel weight for the aircraft should be the same value. So if these are different values, you've gone wrong somewhere. And also when you're totaling up the moment section, be careful with your plus and minus values so you get the correct total moment when you get to your no fuel section. So again from here, it's just a simple matter of dividing the mo total moment with no fuel by the total weight with no fuel. And again, we fill in our fuel values, so we'll have 72 kilograms of fuel on board. And as specified down here, between 50 and 150 litres we use for the lateral arm, minus 338, minus 338 in this box here. And then we times those two together, as minus 24336. Again, adding these two together, and then we add these two together just like we did up here. And that should equal the same value as up above. So 671.3 liters. Again, if this doesn't match that value, then something's gone wrong. So again, just like we did up here, we get the final lateral arm of the aircraft with fully fueled and fully loaded from the total moment here, divided by the total weight of the aircraft and then that will give us minus 35.5. So now all we've got to do is put these values here into the lateral C of G box. Um, this doesn't ask for weight anymore. This is a mixture of the lateral and the longitudinal arms. And so the we put an X roughly there. And then put our X roughly in the box there. Again, put a line between the two, and we know that as the fuel burns, the weight shifts between those two X's. And again, if I just colour in the limiting lines again, you can clearly see that, that both those X's lie well within the limits. So as the fuel burns in flight, we stay within the limits. The, the last and final thing to check is that with our takeoff, weight, we check that the takeoff weight is not over our maximum all up takeoff weight. And as it says down at the bottom here, for the Cabri G2, it's 700 kilograms. So 671.3 kilograms is below 700. So we know that we can take off. So just to sum this up, we know that we are not over our maximum takeoff weight with these two boxes here and 
that throughout the flight that the balance of the aircraft stays within the limits as shown on the graphs there. Now the limiting values for the graphs are specified down here but they're shown here anyway. Now a lazy but more quick way of doing this is to have an electronic version of it that lets you do it a lot quicker. Now this is a spreadsheet I made in the Apple application numbers and all it does is lets me plug in my values and it'll automatically sum them all up for me. I've not figured out a way yet for it to plot the values on the graph but still it makes it a lot quicker. Now when it comes to technical ability with things like this I'm not the best person in the world so if I can make one of these I'm pretty sure you'll be able to make one of these quite easily as well. Now the way this makes my life a lot easier is I put in this box here that I want 100 litres for the flight. It automatically converts it to the weight of Avgas or UL91 which is also a fuel that the Cabra G2 can take as well. So I've also set up this that everything in red is values that I have to fill in myself and everything in blue is automatically figured out for me. So if I put in all the values in red very quickly, now these are all the same values that we've just plugged into our paper version of everything we've just gone through. As you can see, after plugging all those values in, we come out with exactly the same values that we've just done on the paper version, but it's all a lot quicker as you don't have to faff around with your calculator. Now something I've done that helps my life a lot more is on the side of the chart and at the bottom of the electronic version as well. I have all of the aircraft's um, empty weights, longitudinal and later lateral arms, so that I can always just plug these values in very quickly without having to refer to them whilst I'm at HeliCenter itself. But if you're going to do this method, make sure that you're constantly making sure that all of these values are correct because if any major maintenance work is carried out on the aircraft themselves, the weight and balance may change. So just keep that in mind. So guys, I hope you found that video informative and interesting. Hopefully you can see why it's important to do your mass and balance calculations before you take off in your aircraft. And it's quite a vital thing to do before you go flying. If you've got any questions about what we've just covered, leave them down in the comments section down below or you can direct message me on my Facebook or Instagram accounts and I'll answer you through those. I'm always open to suggestions in terms of things that you guys would like to see on the channel in the future, whether that's flying type videos or more ground based stuff just like we've done here today. It'd be nice if you'd consider subscribing to the channel to see more content like this and a lot more flying videos coming up in the future. I hope you like my new setup here with a new background for the more ground based videos that I intend to do more of in the near future. And after just recently getting my private pilot's license come through the door the other day, there'll be a lot more private flying videos and some great trips coming along the way soon. Don't forget you can get 5% off Pooley's flight equipment if you use my discount code, the Micropilot. But until next time, I hope you stay safe and I'll see you in the next one.